Hey YouTube, well it's Thursday today and you can see I got a nice pile of red oak there so I'm going to be cutting one of those logs here now in a minute. But before I do I wanted to show you something. Um, I make these dogs, let me just uh, get a picture of it here and I'll explain it. So I make these aluminum dogs as well as the handle and stuff. And here, here's the thing, um, this, the dog that they give you from Woodmiser, this piece just slips on the bolt, and every time you go to t undo it, it falls off and rolls somewhere on the ground, which I hate, okay, I don't mind working, but I sure as heck don't like chasing stuff for no reason. So what I did was I took and I I took a piece of an acme bolt, threaded one end, put a hole in the other end for the handle, okay? And then I made these pieces on the lathe so that they could still grab the bottom of the board and what you want is when you put the bolt in, now this was a little tricky at first, but when you put the bolt in, you don't want the bolt to turn, you want this aluminum to be able to spin but you want the bolt to be below the face of this okay so because if the bolt head is sticking out that means that you're going to be putting pressure on the bolt and the quarter inch threads that are in there every time you tighten it up and sooner or later you're going to rip the threads you know what I mean depending upon what you're trying to tighten so they don't have the th the bolt doesn't have to be tight against the aluminum. It just has to be below this face, and I have it recessed so that that can happen. So I've made a lot of these for people. I mean, I've sent so many of these out; it isn't even funny. But um, the point is, is when you put it together, like you take this part with the bolt off, if it comes in the mail, you know, together, and then you just take this apart on your uh, your uh, sawmill and you screw this new part in there okay and then I also have a new handle on it so you don't have to be changing anything around and then if you ever want to you can always put the other handle back in there but the main point here that I'm making is you want this to be able to spin when the bolts all the way in so um, I've gotten pretty good at you know how deep to adjust the threads and all but sometimes if you want to keep using this it's a good idea to put some kind of Loctite or something on the inside of the threads not not a lot of it just a little bit to hold it there in place so anyway if you want a set of these um, you can write to me at Joe Saljo J O S A L J O at frontiernet.net frontier like you know Daniel Boone frontier so Joe Saljo at frontiernet.net and I can talk to you about what the cost of it is and you know where I gotta send it and stuff like that so I really like these they've worked really well for me um, I haven't had any problems with them uh, the uh, metal, you know, sometimes you got to spray some fluid on there to keep it, uh, you know, from rusting, which is no big deal. But uh, having this not fall off, believe me, is a treasure to have. It's a pleasure to be able to use these. So now this is a smaller one. I make them two inch. The smaller ones I really don't like, but this is one of the first ones I made and I put on here and I just left it on. I don't like waste and stuff but anyway I make them two inch size and then with the same configuration you're seeing there okay so that's all I wanted to say about that so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be getting my backhoe going start up the mill and stuff so that we can um, go ahead and cut that uh, red oak that I have okay guys so I've got the log on there. Now there's two things wrong with this log. <clears throat> Let me just, and it's no big deal if you've, done, if you've done some cutting, but I'm just gonna show you this anyway. If you look here, you can see there's a crack in here. What happened was, 
when I was cutting this log off, the other log was down on the ground. This tree was way up in the air because there were branches on it. And when I cut it, it, it split a little bit. Now, I cut real far up on the split, so it's not split far in here. But because the split's pretty much straight across, what you want to do is turn this to cut it so that this split is either flat, well actually flat with the bunk would be the best way. You'll get the widest boards out of it. That's the one problem. The other problem is this here. Because of the way the tree was laying, I didn't, I wasn't able to cut this off of here. And um, I just didn't. So this thing's like eight inches higher than what it ought to be. So the first thing I want to do here is just nip this off. But I'm not going to cut it the way it's sitting. I want to nip that off first while it's upright and then I'm going to turn this log so that this is flat. Okay? So, I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, somebody just pulled in so I gotta go do some talk and I don't know who they are. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Just give me a minute or two. I'll be right back. You won't even notice it. Okay guys, so the saw's been warming up now. Um, I want to cut that branch off that's up there so I can roll this again. Okay, so I got that cut off now, and now what I want to do, like I said, is to roll this so that that crack that's in the log is horizontal. That'll give me a, a waste of maybe one or two boards if I have to, but it'll be a better chance than trying to cut them the way it sits. So let me turn that flat. Some nice looking red oak there, even though it's small. No knots in that at all so far. Nice. 
very nice. That's what we're after, stuff like that. Okay, so let me turn that so I get the can. Now, according to my sheet, I should get a seven inch cant out of this, but I'll be happy with one by sixes. So if I get six inch, a six inch cant, I'm fine with that. wondering this is probably the uh, fourth cut out of the tree so it's like the next to the last log you'll see up on the pile there I think that that small one there that would be the top of the tree but this one here is the next to the last and if the top looks this good I'm hoping the, the big part of the tree is as good as this
I cut that at eight inches just to see where I would end up because down at the far end there I don't have any wane but actually I have wane in the middle there so I can go down there another inch or so I could probably go down two inches uh, fully if I wanted to to get that wane off so I'm gonna make another cut here and then I'm gonna toss that one probably I don't know maybe Maybe an inch and a half, we'll see what happens. Let me measure it. too bad there's a little knot on this one side that's got me a little messed up but I'm gonna cut that top off of there and then I'm gonna roll it one time and cut all the boards out of that width
not too bad. I'm gonna roll it one turn and then cut all the board.
left there isn't too bad looking. So I'll get a couple of boards out of that. You can see the split still in the one board, but it doesn't go that far down, so I should be able to get eight feet out of that. This board is eight foot nine, this log. So I think at nine inches I cut that out of there, I'll be okay. But I'm not gonna worry about that for now. I'm just gonna keep cutting these boards and then dry them. And if I have to, I can cut them down to one by four or less. If you see what I'm saying here, the split's out of the wood now, so the rest of these won't have this little split in it. Looks like it comes pretty far though, maybe to here. But like I said before, when it comes to red oak boards, you hardly ever use an eight footer unless you're cutting molding. So there's still good wood in here to be used for furniture.
Now it's not the it's not the worst red oak I've ever seen, and there are good boards at the bottom and at the top of that. But you know it's nice when you get a whole plank that's worth the money. But uh, I'm still going to dry these. We're going to take a look at what they look like when they're dry. I think this one here is seven or 15 sixteenths to cut. I'm going to try and get that out of that bottom one yet. That bottom one's a little thick. crazy thing here is that this bottom board is the best looking board. going to cut that but you can see the um, I can't quite get that 1 8 out of there all the way down so I'm not going to worry about it I'll just dry it as it is and then I'll take and uh, plane it for whatever size I need okay guys so that's it for that that hunk of red oak um, it's not bad stuff that one there that board you're looking at is good the other boards eh, a little flaky for all good uh, furniture lumber but nonetheless you can get some boards out of it I just got to get space in my kiln here I need my neighbor to get his wood out of here soon so that I can fill the kiln up with the, with the rest of this red oak I'm cutting Okay guys, so I'm just going to give you a little info about the diet that I've been on and then that's the end of the video. Um, yeah, so anyway, I've been doing a lot of fasting. I fast for 20 hours. What I do is um, from 5 o'clock, which is when I finish eating, from 5 until 1 o'clock, and it's almost 1 o'clock now, so I'm just about ready to start to eat. But um, I don't eat constantly from 1 to 5. I eat like, you know, something like a piece of ground beef or two. Depends on how hungry I am. And then I'll eat uh, something else at supper time. Now at supper time I usually fill myself to the point where I'm, I can't eat anymore. And it, the, the thing is, is as you stay on this fast, it's automatically kind of shrinking I, I'm gonna guess at this your stomach so you're not really eating as much food because normally I could eat four bowls of whatever food I'm eating um, and now I'm down to two and I'm pretty full with that so I haven't lost a lot of weight yet and I'm not really caring about that just so that the clothes I have fit me I mean I don't want to be 
you know, having to buy all new pants and everything. But anyway, it's been working pretty good. So I fast for the 20 hours and then eat lunch at 1. And then I eat around 4 o'clock from 4 to 5, somewhere in there. Sally will have supper made for us. And I'll eat then again. And uh, just to give you an idea, I know a lot of people are messed up over this. But um, we use a lot of tomatoes, peppers, and onions. I said it before, I'll say it again. I like those. I like the flavor it gives to all kinds of meat. And she's been making chili with that configuration. She makes um, any kind of, it doesn't matter what you have. Pork is good like that. Beef is good like that. Hamburger is good like that. Um, she's working on trying to get different recipes, though. And the flavors, though, that she's coming up with is pretty astounding. Because the other day I ate chili that she made a different way. And it was totally best chili I ever ate. The only thing is, is that it was not near the kind of chili I'm used to. But it was really good. So, things like chili, and this comes from, you know, like Sally's nationality. Not the chili so much, but a uh, halupki, which is... Uh, you know, stuffed cabbage, that we can eat as much as you can fill in your stomach. Um, stuffed cabbage, you could eat um, fried cabbage, but you can't eat it with the noodles, so you got to eliminate the noodles out of that. So we're trying to think of different things to put in it to give a little flavor as well as, you know, be filling. Um, we have a recipe from a guy that's a cook on online. I I can't think, I think his name is Emerald, where you make, um, uh, you take ham, um, I can't think of the name of these little things that she buys, it's like a little joint, I can't think of the name of it, but anyway, you take ham, you mix it with a whole bunch of green beans, uh, peppers, a little bit of onions, a little bit of garlic, stuff like that, I'll tell you what, it's fantastic. And it really fills you up, and it helps to give you the energy that you'd need. I mean, like right now, normally at this time, I haven't eaten since 5 o'clock last night, so it's around 1 quarter after 1 at the moment. So by this time, I'm normally, my insulin is so low that I can't function. And it's not been that. It's been actually in normal. So I'm considering normal right now, and I said it before, somewhere between 90 and 140. So if I can keep my insulin levels in there, I can cut back on insulin. Now just to give you an idea, I had told you I started off with two, two to, uh, to 250 units of insulin a day when I started this fasting diet. And right now I'm down to around 60. Okay, last week it was about 100. Now I'm around 60, 65, somewhere in there. You can't cheat on this diet, though, because when you, you, know, you have the diabetes that you're fighting. And since we have diabetes, we can't eat you know, potatoes, um, grain, and sugar. We have to stay away from that. And this will be forever, you know, the rest of our life. But the good thing is she's coming up with all kinds of great recipes and stuff. One of these days I'll have to just put some recipes up that she made for people who are actually trying to go on this diet. But I'm amazed that the insulin went from 250 or more a day down to 60 at this point and even less. I think one day I had uh, 38 units that I had to take throughout the day, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm losing weight, but it's slow. Now, I'm still walking and stuff, but um, you know, I don't care how slow it is. Just so right now I'm at the point where I can wear my old clothes. Now, it's not where I'm going to stop here. I'm continuing this because I have to. But I'm just telling you that any, any of you guys who, are, who have diabetes and are wondering about people saying that you can reverse it, you can reverse it by eating the right foods. It's that simple. And technically, we were all told that on the first day we were told we had diabetes, we got to watch what we eat. Nobody listens to that. I know I didn't listen to it for 30 years. So now 
I've gotten serious about it because at my age, you know, running out of energy after 20 minutes worth of work is a pretty tough call. You can't really do anything. So now I'm up to probably, I don't know, maybe six hours worth of work a day that I can do. And I'm happy with that. I was working till late at night one night just in the garage uh, working on something. And that's the good part. So you can get back to doing all the things you want to do. Oh, and one other thing. If you guys want any of these dogs, Josaljo, J-O-S-A-L-J-O, at FrontierNet.net. I'll write you back if you write to me telling me you want that or the bevel siding cutters. Either one of them I'll, I'm making at the moment. So if you want them, just give me a, a buzz on the email and I'll get back to you. Okay, guys, have a good one.